What is up, you guys? And welcome back to the Blue Smoke Podcast. I am your host, Blue Smoke Productions, or Nicholas Taylor, whatever you want to call me. This episode of the Blue Smoke Podcast is brought to you by myself because I'm not relevant enough for sponsors. I want to apologize if the audio sounds a little strange on this episode. I am recording this on my phone outside while I'm using my clip-on mic and I'm recording this outside. I've been having a lot of problems with Audacity and using my Yeti lately. And uh, today's really nice outside. We've got some clear blue skies. It's nice and bright. It's the weather's warm. It's just too nice to not be outside and admittedly I kind of want to just take a break from editing for a while. I also actually want to apologize for not being on last week, not posting anything last week. I was just busy working on, well I've been so bored in quarantine lately that I decided to make a micro short film. Um, It was a short film basically about Uh, Well, I can't tell you what it's about, but uh, if you want to watch that short film, it already came out at the time this came out. It came out on Friday, May 1st on the Ocean Eye Productions YouTube channel, the Ocean Eye Productions Instagram, and the Ocean Eye Productions uh, Facebook. Now, uh, that's the other thing. Uh, I want to discuss Ocean Eye Productions for a minute. Ocean Eye Productions is my, is going to be my professional company's name. I'm working on starting my own video editing service. So if you're a rail fan and you need an editor, you know you can contact me on the Ocean Eye Productions content. I also make the Ocean Eye Records channel where I compose music and the Ocean Eye's ASMR channel where I make ASMR. Um, So if you want to check all that stuff out, go on ahead and uh, yeah. So I guess let's get on to the podcast. Now, I didn't really plan on what today's episode was going to be about. I was originally thinking about making it about my trip out west because very soon you'll get a Best of Blue Smoke Productions video for 2017, which I've been editing a lot lately. But uh, I guess I could have rendered that while I was recording the podcast. Well, rendering a couple clips because that, that's kind of a problem with this kind of stuff when you're trying to render clips because I've had to remove grain from the footage and that causes all kinds of problems. It's, it's not fun. Um, and then you got to wait for it to render it. It always takes like three hours to render one clip. It's, it's just a lot of, a lot of patience and a lot of, uh, it's just very stressful personally. But I think instead I'm actually going to talk about my experience chasing Louisville and Nashville 1593 Um, because I don't have a lot of time today that's kind of a shorter story and um, I think it's uh, I think it's just a little bit of a it's a little bit easier of a story to tell so I guess I'll start this at the beginning of course um, so I think it was sometime, I don't remember when exactly it was, I think it was in the summer when I heard about this, but um, I had heard that the Louisville and Nashville Railroad Historical Society would be holding their annual convention at the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum this year. And um, as part of the convention, the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum would be dressing Southern Railway 4501 up as a Louisville and Nashville Mikado 282 Mikado. You you probably knew what that was already. So basically they were going to give 1593 the Chickamauga turn, which is very rare. They almost never give one of the steam locomotives the Chickamauga turn because there's no way to turn the locomotive around in Chickamauga. That's why it usually pulls the much longer Somerville train, which is better for it anyway. It gets way more miles in. You get more opportunities to chase it. And it's it's an all-around fun trip, the Somerville train is. It's actually probably one of my all-time favorite excursions that I've chased. I didn't know if I was going to go on this trip originally because I was kind of... Oh, I kind of had mixed reactions about it. Well, for one thing, I was just like, "Eh, is it really going to be anything that special? I mean, it's just... 
4501, dressed up in a different livery. Um, there were a lot of of uh, Southern foamers who were complaining about this. Like, it's just going to be a one-off thing. Why are you complaining? But there was like a lot of flack and just stuff from Tennessee Valley Railroad to Tennessee Valley Railroad and to Southern fanboys. And I didn't know, like I said, it was going to be here in Georgia, which is where I live. So it was only about an hour and a half away from where I lived, but I didn't know if I was going to go on this trip or not, especially since I wasn't going to have as nearly as much to chase. A couple months passed and I started school up again. I was starting my exit review class, which was a mostly hands-off class. It was pretty much just like an extra money maker uh, for it. I was doing all, I, basically they leave you to your own devices and they make you do your own thing. So basically, one of the projects we had to do was a news package project. Now, I don't think a lot of people are familiar with new, what the, the term news package. Basically, it's what the, most people say like, oh, it's a new, it's a segment on the news, but the official term is package, a news package. And yeah, I'm in film school, by the way. So it was my final class before I got my um, associate's degree which I currently have now. I was like thinking about stories I could use and all the like potential things I could do with this project. Now, part of the project required an interview and all that. And I'm just like, I, if I can interview someone, I'll do it on site. And I wanted to do something train related. For, well, I'd already done a train related video with um, that animated PSA, the railroad crossing PSA that I used all the 3D models for and everything. And uh, I should probably also mention, actually, prior to that, I wanted to do a project about nonprofits. Well, I had to do a project about nonprofits. So I was going to do the Southeastern Railroad Museum, but uh, that didn't work out. Then I thought about doing the Southern Railroad Museum in Kennesaw, but they were also not very good about returning my calls. So I just ended up using a, a previously used documentary that I helped make. I just submitted that. Uh, I was a cinematographer on that project. And uh, yeah, it was called The Other Face of Homelessness. It was about homeless nonprofits. And uh, I just used that with the director's permission, might I add, because um, the director is one of my best friends. So those that project didn't work out. And I thought my only train project for the year was going to be the um, just that, that railroad crossing project. However, I remembered sometime, I think it was in September, it was like the week before this trip was to happen. I remembered like, oh yeah, Southern 4501 is going to do that excursion dressed in L&M colors. And I looked it up to see if that was still on. And to my surprise, I was just like, oh, that's this week. I think that excursion was on a Saturday. It was either a Friday or a Saturday. So I had decided to do basically a mini chase, meaning getting like maybe two or three shots. And uh, I immediately told my mom about this idea and because I needed her to be my getaway driver. As it's mentioned, I do not drive myself on most of these chases because I don't really trust myself. Yeah, so I just decided to go on, go and chase Ellen in 1593. Well, 4501 dressed up as 1593. So I began doing my research, doing a little bit of research about the Ellen and Mikados. And then I started doing my research of the area of Chickamauga. Now, typically I thought about starting the chase from Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum again, like I did the first time or starting it from like maybe the Missionary Ridge Tunnel or somewhere like that but uh i ultimately decided to start the chase in chickamauga itself because my main plan for this was just to get like enough footage to last you know to be able to make a standard news package and i would worry about making a regular chase video later so basically I picked two spots in Chickamauga. I was initially going to pick downtown and then the first spot I was going to pick was going to be that nice little, I don't quite, it's not quite an S curve. It's, 
it's just that really nice curve. It's a very popular spot and I knew that would be a good, a good spot to get. And then I began analyzing the Chickamauga turn route and looking to see just how many spots I could actually get between Chattanooga and Chickamauga just to make sure there wasn't anything I was missing. First, I started looking at shots in between those areas. I would watch Travis Gordon's Chickamauga turn video to see how many spots I could actually get. But then I remembered the Chickamauga turn is a diesel powered train and not many people are interested in diesel excursions. This excursion is going to be way more popular because it's a steam powered trip. And I was looking at the schedule for the train as well. Uh, I remember I asked on Facebook, like, what time will the 1593 get into Chickamauga? And then what time will it be leaving Chickamauga? Or it said, it said what time it was leaving Chattanooga and it said what time it was leaving Chickamauga, but it didn't say what time it would be in Chickamauga by. And then I got a response saying that the that uh, don't trust like certain time changes the low and he mentioned that the locomotive would be traveling very slow because it had dinner cars on it or dining cars so i was planning everything based on that i, I think it said it was going to leave chattanooga at about nine o'clock ten o'clock and uh in the weeks leading up to it i was keeping like a very good track of the locomotive's progress like the the um cosmetic changes. I knew they weren't going to repaint the whole locomotive for one day. They just, I knew they were just going to throw some like magnets on the tender. And although they did give it an authentic l and headlight and an l and whistle, as well as carving some really nice replica number boards, it's a shame they, they probably spent some extra dollars on those. And unfortunately they're only going to get used for, well, they're not going to get used for again for a while unless they do another excursion with L&N 1593. So basically, yeah, I picked all the spots. Like I said, I was going to do downtown Chickamauga, but then I discovered this other spot that was like a small park with uh, a tiny bridge. Like it, it ran over a bike trail and uh, it was a nice little short bridge. It was, I remember just first discovering that shot in one of the Nougat Rail fans videos. But yeah, I picked this small bridge and I was a little reluctant about filming at it at first because I knew it was going to be a good shot. But one of the things I was worried about with it is that, you know, obviously I wanted to get a shot where we got to hear that whistle, that um, l and three chime whistle. And uh, the locomotives don't whistle at that spot. So I was a little reluctant about like filming there. But I decided to film there ultimately. I was doing, I was like, you know, this is a rare shot. Not many people have it. I can have it just to say I have it. It's, it's a decent shot. Why not? So the day came, chase day came. Uh, I had my time plan set up. Basically, what I had planned was get my two spots in Chickamauga um try to find someone to interview in chickamauga find someone from the crew like interview uh like a conductor or an engineer or a fireman the one person i was holding out to interview actually and i don't think he knows this but the one person i was really holding out that would be on the train was travis gordon i was really hoping holding out that he would be on the train because I've watched his documentary on TVRM. He's very insightful. I was just like, he would be the perfect person to interview for for this podcast. Or well, I'd love to get him on the podcast actually. Travis Gordon, if if you're listening, um, if you'd like to be on the podcast sometime, hit me up. I, I would love to have you on the podcast. And uh, yeah, I was really hoping uh, holding out that like I would get a chance to interview him because I knew I knew I wanted to interview him because like said he's very knowledgeable he's very insightful on the museum and he'd be perfect i arrived at i think the lnn train was going to leave at about nine o'clock i got to chickamauga around around 9 30 ish maybe it was 10 30 i don't remember for sure so i was expecting you know the train was going to pull out at nine i knew the train would be going slow and uh, throughout that entire time, like the suspense was killing me. I was afraid of us being late. And I remember I was like, I looked at T 
TVRM's rail cam where I could pay attention to the excursion and you know the excursion hadn't left yet. I should probably mention when I first saw like the pictures of the locomotive, I loved it of uh, the 1593 design. I love the design. I couldn't see it from the rail cams though. And I'd also had heard the whistle. I loved the sound of that whistle. And uh, like I said, I was watching the rail cams. The suspense was kind of killing me. I was just waiting to see that thing like pull out from the rail cams. And finally it did. It, it pulled out with a 10 car train. Yeah, so about 9.30ish, maybe even 10 o'clock, uh, I arrived at the spot, the first spot, which is the nice, the Chickamauga, I guess they call it, that's the Chickamauga turn. It's the really nice turn around the battlefield. And that's why I went with the title steaming through the battlefield on that video. The 1593 was not there yet. It was completely desolate. It was quiet. We were the first people there. And I went ahead and set up my cameras on two separate sides. I set up my GoPro on the left side of the tracks so that the train could come when the train came around the curve i knew it would look good from the gopro and then i set up my regular camera from the right side of the tracks x which is where i was standing and if you watch my shot you can see me there on the right side of the tracks like i said i was expecting the train to get there through like maybe by 10 ish you know i wasn't expecting a long excursion well i wasn't expecting it to take that long i wasn't expecting the locomotive to go as slow as it was going like i, I remember hearing that the train had been going slow and that it and i also remembered it had to cross the main line at some point before it went on to the um the Ch chatuga and chickamauga railroad but anyway i was just sitting there there was a lot of weeds that grew you know, the shadows weren't the best, but it, it actually, they both turned out like good shots. And finally, like the rail fans started piling up around that area. Surprisingly, none of them touched my GoPro or anything. The shot, they, you know, they stayed out of the way. Thank you to all those rail fans that uh, grouped up around it, but didn't get in the way. Heck, there's a really nice, um, <sighs> there's a really nice shot showing like all the rail fans standing on that side and it says, ready, aim, fire. And I remember, like, I remember I, I started hearing that L and N whistle, and it was just echoing through the sound, the um, the wind, and uh, that you know it was nice and sunny out that day as well. It was good lighting, I guess, decent lighting, and I was just I heard that whistle, and I was just like, that is such a beautiful whistle, and it was really cool hearing that thing echo. The funniest moment was that uh, you could see some deer running across the tracks and I remember hearing some rail fans shout, get off, get off the tracks, foamers, <laughs> or get off the tracks, foamers, calling the deer foamers. It was kind of funny. Like, I just, my mom was like asking what that was about. And she's like, yeah, th no, there were some deer that were running across the tracks. And finally, I think it was like a whole hour and a half later, maybe two hours later, actually, probably two hours later. Um, the L&N 1593 came slowly around the bend and uh, it was just coming around slowly and it was very quiet like it wasn't you know loud or anything it was just it just came around quiet and slow and I was just like when they said this locomotive was going slow like I wasn't expecting like five miles per hour maybe ten but uh it was going slow and it was just quiet and uh but i think the engineers saw that huge horde of photographers around there so they decided to put on a show for it so it went around slowly so then they turned up the throttle and just all of a sudden the exhaust blasts from the locomotive just started like billowing out the chuffs got louder you know we got some good exhaust blasts and it was like it was like the locomotive was just winding up it was it was just winding up and uh they just got louder and louder and it, the the smoke got heavier and at the right moment lnn 1593 blasted that lnn3 chime whistle and it sounded amazing you know like i said it was just going through slow but it just the sound that's the thing i love about like certain shots if the sound is good you know if you get good sound it was a good shot in my opinion 
So yeah, the engine pulled a pretty big train. It was about 10 cars long. So about the same length as the, the Somerville excursion that I chased. And I realized like how slow the train was going. I was thinking like, I could probably get like two or three more shots in here. But uh, I ended up just sticking to the game plan, going to the park and going to the short bridge. And uh, I was the only, there was one other person there, but he was flying a drone. So yeah, I'm the only person to have the shot of the train crossing, I guess you could call it the Helicopter Park Bridge, because I think the official name for that park is Helicopter Park, and I have two of those, keep in mind. I have a shot of it going over it on my regular camera and one on my GoPro. So finally the train pulled into Chickamauga. I couldn't get to it when it was pulling into Chickamauga, so I just ran, drove down to like the front of the train and uh, you know, to where it was standing. And I got some really nice shots of it, you know, got some good close-ups of the locomotive and all that. In fact, the shot you're probably looking at right now, the shot I probably picked as the thumbnail for this, for this episode was probably, it, that was probably the one that I went with. The shot you're seeing is probably the one that I'm talking about right now, the one in, of it being in Chickamauga. Uh, this is where I got my first interview. Um, I just went up to the crew and asked if they'd like to do an interview and fireman Brian Hunt agreed to do an interview. And he gave a pretty decent interview. You know, he gave me some little facts, you know, talking about, you know, how this happened, you know, what happened, you know, what they did. And you can see that in the interview. You can watch the news package. The news package will be included down in the description. He actually, yeah, gave me a pretty good interview. I remember the new Garel fan after he watched the podcast, or not the podcast, this that interview or whatever, or that package, he was just like, how did you get Brian Hunt? And I'm just like, I just asked. And he did it. And uh, afterwards, he they suggested like, you should interview Travis Gordon. And I'm just like, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to do. And he, they mentioned that he was the conductor on the train. He would be at the back. And, uh, but I ended up going back to the Chickamauga Depot and seeing Tag 80, because Tag 80 was already down in Chickamauga at that time. And I had never seen Tag 80 in person before. Tag 80 is my favorite diesel at the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum. But uh, I had never seen Tag 80 up close before. And it is probably it's definitely my favorite diesel at the Tennessee Valley it's it's a very nice looking diesel locomotive and I love its color it's you know well it's blue obviously that's probably why I love it so much but uh tag 80 was like it was a nice looking diesel engine uh yeah I went and got saw tag 80 move basically I watched the whole like operation of them moving ta tag 80 pulling the train out of the way and then 1593 backing up and then them backing tag 80 up and having 1593 run around run to the the uh, couple up tender first and then have 1590 or tag 80 couple up behind 1593 pull the train back into the station and then they uncoupled 1593 just watching all that switching and then pulling the 1593 to not quite outside the depot, just outside for photo opportunities. And uh, I wish I'd filmed on the other side, honestly, so I could have gotten a much like wider shot because the shots I got were a lot more up close. And uh, yeah, they moved 1593 back out for photo opportunities just outside of the um, outside of the depot like there's a little like spot with a Civil War mural on it um, which I was able to get some footage of that before 1593 was pulled out in front of it and I got a good shot there with like the people crowded around it and I knew I needed that for the news package so I got one of those I got a shot of you know, I got the shots of Tag 80 and everything. And then shortly after that, um, Bri uh, Brian Hunt came back and he brought me Travis Gordon. And, you know, it was very nice getting to meet him. Travis, thank you so much for 
doing the interview and he gave me a really good interview. You know, he told me the history of the Allen and Mikados, the history of 4501. And uh, he, I may upload that interview like uncut sometime. You know, I may post that actually if, if he's okay with that. If, if, if you're okay with that, Travis, I'd like to post that interview uncut. And then we also talked about, asked him like to go over the history of 4501's many cosmetic changes. Cause 4501 has gone over like, I want to say it was, it's been cosmetically altered officially. Travis Gordon goes through this a little bit more in detail. First it was painted, you know, as in Southern Railway black. That's what it wore in revenue service. Then it stayed in black, but was relettered for the Kentucky and Tennessee Railroad when it went to the Kentucky and Tennessee Railroad. Then when it went to the Tennessee Valley Railroad, it briefly was repainted back into Southern black. But when the Southern Railroad steam program was uh, officially started, it was painted in Southern green and gold, like the passenger locomotives. Then it was painted in B&O black, for the movie Fool's Parade, starring James Stewart. Then it was returned to the Southern Green, operated like that again for several years. Then in 1996, it was returned to its freight black paint scheme. And then briefly before that, 1997, 1998, it was relettered again for the Norfolk and Western Railroad for the movie October Sky, which is one of my all time favorite movies actually. Then it went back to Southern Black and then it was rebuilt and it's currently in Southern Black. But of course, this is actually the first non-Southern livery it's carried since October Sky in 1998. So yeah, 4501 has gone through a number of cosmetic changes. And I think the reason why it's used so often and re uh, cosmetically altered so often is it's, you know, it's a USRA designed Mikado. Well, it was rebuilt to a USRA standard and it's very easy to dress that locomotive as anything. Like it can be used for anything because many locomotives used the USRA standard. And uh, well, when many of them were rebuilt to that standard, it can masquerade as like several other types of Mikados. Like I said, it can masquerade as a B&O Mikado and it could masquerade as a um, Allen and Mikado. And uh, yeah, once again, I really want to thank Travis Gordon for doing this interview. I would love to have you on the podcast sometime. I hung around a little bit longer. I waited for the locomotive to, you know, couple up to, the train and saw Tag 80 pull the train out because uh, it had to pull it out because because uh, the the CNC would not allow the locomotive to run tender first or backwards. So Tag 80 was coupled to the back and it pulled the train out. I briefly saw it as it was pulling back through to Chickamauga, but I didn't stop to get any more videos of it. Then I went and went and got some food. Then we went home. So that was my experience with LNN 1593. And I found out, well, I knew beforehand that 1593 was going to be doing trips on the Missionary Ridge Local that Saturday. Because, yeah, yeah, I did this on a Friday. And then the actual excursion was on a Saturday. And then the following week, the locomotive was, it was announced that 1593 would be pulling an excursion on the Chickamauga, or not the Chickamauga turn, the Somerville Steam Special. And that would be the last excursion of 1593. Uh, I tried to convince my mom that to go chase that, but mom, mom refused. She said like, no, you can't go chase that one. So after that, I edited both my videos, like I made the news package and the regular 1593 video. Both videos are on the channel. If you haven't seen them, you should go watch them. Anyway, that is my story of my experience with Ellen in 1593. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and this is Blue Smoke Productions saying goodbye and thank you for watching.